You know, I've been thinking, you've been tuned in. I just passed two years of doing yoga and meditation every single day. And I've been thinking a lot about yoga in particular. I think it's possibly the best thing we have as far as a metaphor for life. Let me explain. So oftentimes in class, you'll start in a position known as child's pose. Or if you're feeling crazy, you could start in happy baby. There's no rules. <laughs> but the interesting thing is you usually end in a pose called savasana, which is also known as corpse pose, right? Corpse, like laying dead body. Now, if you put two and two together and you get 11, then, <laughs> then we went to the same school. But no, for real. Think about it. If you start in child's pose and X amount of time goes by and now you're in corpse pose, isn't this the perfect analogy for life itself? While the whole time in between, the main goal, the main purpose was to be present. Experience the moment in your physical form transcend the physical form and stay so present that there is nothing else in the world that could possibly matter than this current moment. Now, personally, that's been a goal for me to live like this fully, 24-7. Of course, that's a very tough thing, and I work towards it every day. Um, I'm not a, a mythological creature <laughs> like a uh, Neem Crowley Baba, right? Now, that is a a real pure person who lived perfectly in the moment. This, of course, is Ram Dass's guru, if you're unfamiliar. I believe that is what these beings are, these fully transcended beings that are also somehow still here on Earth. I believe they are just in the middle, perfectly in the moment, right? They're in between child and death, but they stay in the moment. And I think that is the cheat code for life itself. <laughs> If you want to think of it in video game terms, the present moment. There is nothing else. There is nothing more, nothing less. It is all we have. And that's why I believe yoga as a teacher is quite possibly the most powerful teacher we have. And you are now tuned into the... <laughs> Bobby Keith podcast. What's going on, y'all? This is episode 87. Of course, I'm Bobby Keith sending you peace, love, and positivity. Humans, aliens, and other. Hope all is well. Hope you had a good week. You know what I'm saying? Hope you celebrated Mother's Day with joy and passion. You know what I'm saying? I uh I had a rough one. You know what I mean? Um, of course, if you guys have been listening or know anything about me, I just recently lost my mom, right, in uh, July 4th of last year, so this is kind of the first, well, it is the first Mother's Day without her, right? That's a, that's a major thing in life, those emotions heighten on a day like this, but the kicker is last Mother's Day was actually the last time I believe I had a real coherent conversation with my mom, you know? Um, we lost her very quickly due to her metastatic brants, <laughs> breast cancer moving to her brain. Um, so her brain functionality went from one of the smartest people I've ever known to someone who's not fully there very quickly. And the last time I felt like I was really speaking to her was Mother's Day of last year, um. We had a nice little brunch, Tall set it up, my incredible wife, and I'll never forget that, you know what I mean? And uh, of course, that was a year ago, full year has passed, and I felt like it's actually been a year since I've uh, spoken to the one, you know, the woman I knew my whole life. Um, of course, we had a couple more months, it's, you know, May to July is like a month and a half or some change or whatever, but it was not the same brain that um, I knew my whole life. So, you know, it was a tough one um, <laughs> this Mother's Day. Sorry to get everybody on a little down 
but <laughs> that's what this is. I'm fully sharing. Um, you know what I mean? There's no holding back with the uh, with this content. You know, I gotta put it out. I gotta lay. I can't can't hide stuff from y'all. You know what I mean? That would be insincere of me. So. <laughs> It's really what I'm going through. You know, the kicker was on a <laughs> about this day morning. You know, um, here's a little a little aside. Panera Bread. Y'all familiar with Panera Bread? I'm sure you're familiar with Panera Bread. They have a a insane promotion going on right now. <laughs> I'm trying to lighten the mood. It's not really working. But follow follow with me. They have an insane promotion going on right now. If you sign up for their uh, unlimited sip club i believe is what it's called <laughs> you sign up for that right now right now at this exact moment you are gonna have free like drinks it's a broad term for drinks it's including like hot coffee hot tea cold coffee cold tea uh sodas i think they they're little um excuse me the little uh like lemonades and stuff like that all of that completely free every two hours until like august so I'm like what the fuck of course i have to sign up funny thing is actually the reason i signed up was because um well multiple reasons but um the one that pushed me over the edge was it said i got an ad i got a lot of ads for it actually but one of the ads was uh free coffee until or unlimited free coffee until july 4th i was like oh that's an interesting little sign maybe Maybe, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> mom's up there trying to get me to save a couple dollars. You know what I'm saying? Uh, save some money on the Starbucks. You know what I mean? Get some free coffee. It's right across the street from Starbucks, you know? And it's free. Might as well get free coffee. <laughs> so that's why I signed up, right? So I signed up and it's actually insane. Like, if, if you're not signed up for this program, I really think you should be. Um. Just set a little reminder in your phone to cancel the subscription before uh, they start charging you. Even when they do charge you, I think it's $11 a month or something. Really affordable if you're a daily coffee drinker. But um, anyway, back to the story. <laughs> so I signed up for this Panera thing last week. And I probably have been almost every day since I signed up. Like I probably signed up five days ago. I think I've gotten four of them. <laughs> so on Mother's Day... I uh, I woke up, normal day, you know what I'm saying? For me, it didn't really click yet, you know, <laughs> that it was Mother's Day. Um, I How I start my mornings always, no matter what, is I drink a half gallon of water to kind of set a baseline for the day of doing something good for myself, um, putting good fuel into my body, and uh, also getting myself halfway to a gallon of water, which is always the goal um truly the goal is a gallon and a half of water but hitting a gallon is always important for me and it's something I've done every day for nearly six years at this point it's a very important part of my life so I always start with drinking half a gallon right before I do anything um so I did that and then I was like all right I think it's time for maybe let's get some coffee let's go over to Panera I headed over there I uh, got my free coffee um also you don't even have to interact with anybody <laughs> For my introverts out there, you could literally just go to the touch screen and type in your phone number and get your coffee for free. It's absolutely insane. Uh, it was my first time doing it that way, actually, before I'd been going up and giving the lady my phone number. She would give me a cup and blah, blah, blah. Today, there was a line and I guess I spoiled. I am recording on a I'm actually recording late night on Sunday as opposed to Monday for my longtime listeners. This is a very rare occasion, which means I have something planned <laughs> for monday that i don't want to be bogged down by i'm not sure if i'm going to reveal it yet um but anyway uh so yeah i <laughs> there was a line there was a big line so i did the touch screen got my cup and went and got the free coffee and i've been doing a lot of work today i just figured you know i might as well while i'm out because i got a lot of stuff to do uh, i might as well go to whole foods and get my kombucha I needed a kombucha as well uh, to do after or to drink after yoga. Another thing, um, make sure your solar plexus, your gut chakra, your gut itself, your second brain has the proper fuel and functionality to perform at the highest level. 
So I always drink kombucha every day. Um, probably like eight ounces of kombucha. Get a little 16 ounce bottle, I drink two, or you get the 32 ounce and uh, drink four or more even. I think it's a bigger than a 32. I think it might be a 48. Y'all don't care. <laughs> Y'all don't care. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I go to Whole Foods, right? Uh, very normal. I get in, grab my boots right next to the thing. There's a bunch of lines for uh, the registers. Then I realize, oh, everybody's got flowers in their hands. Oh, everybody's got a little, you know, a little, a little snack or something, a little gift. Like, oh shit, it's Mother's Day. <laughs> so it hit me right there in Whole Foods. You know what I'm saying? It hit me right there. Standing in line, waiting to pay for my booch. A little yerba mate, you know what I'm saying? Just two little bottles of beverage. I didn't forget to get anybody flowers, you know what I'm saying? Because, uh, you know, <laughs> didn't need to. <laughs> of course, happy future Mother's Day to my incredible wife, Tal. But um, right now we don't have a kid. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I, I was in that line for Whole Foods. I'm like, oh, shit. It's Mother's Day. All right, all right. I'll, I'll be good. I'm good. I'm good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Check out and get out of here. <laughs> so I pay for my drinks, head out of there, and then I start heading home. Now, the way I go home subconsciously from the Soul Foods takes me literal feet away from the aforementioned place that we got brunch one year ago. <laughs> Like the I uh, shit you not. Um, obviously, uh, COVID was a very big deal for my mom, who was a metastatic breast cancer patient. So it was like she we it was actually uh, maybe the first time we had been out eating together, and it was probably her first time in like two years or however long it had been. Um, and we got a table outside, away from everybody, like literally the most corner table you could possibly have close to the road <laughs> so when i drove by this morning i'm like oh shit there's the table right there <laughs> uh so i mean um you know it's a uh, impossible to not have a mother's day where i'm not thinking about my mom I, I obviously love her a lot and super sad that she's gone um and that's just real <laughs> I give I give you all that peace, love, and positivity as much as I can, but sometimes it's actually tough. You know what I mean? Um, human, alien, other, whatever you think of me. Um, you know, sometimes it's a little tough. I didn't really break down or anything like that. Uh, not to say I wouldn't, or it's a bad thing if I did. It's pretty solid. Been pretty solid all day. Um, been working, and. Uh, you know, if your mom's out there, cherish that. You know what I'm saying? It's a, uh, it sucks. It absolutely sucks to, you know, not have a mom on Mother's Day. <laughs> so, um, I think I'm gonna take a quick break here and return right after these uh, these messages. <laughs> I do love y'all, and uh, peace, love, and positivity. We're gonna keep the vibe tribe high. You know what I'm saying? But I really just had to say that because I know a lot of y'all are curious about that type of stuff, um, how I handle that type of stuff. So, you know, a lot of meditation, a lot of yoga, um, and just grateful for the times that were had, you know what I'm saying? The life that was, um, there's no taking back anything, you know what I mean? That's one that's definitely a frame of mind you have to exist in. Um you can't be, oh, I wish I No, you can't change that. You can't even really see the past. It doesn't really exist. Um but of course, you know, your human little brain fires up and uh taps into your emotions, whatever that is and yeah you're gonna get sad but you know life is good i love my mom and happy mother's day <laughs> and we are back this week's presenting sponsor of the bobby keith podcast is everybody who was involved in getting my car <laughs> to pass inspection 
<laughs> it's finally done. My car is finally passed inspection. I am finally a legal driver on the road. It's been a long journey. Not really, but in February, I failed inspection due to rust. It's May. <laughs> it's almost three months of uh, kind of walking on, what, what do they call it? Walking on needles, walking on pins, whatever you call it, that phrase, that old phrase. Walking on eggshells. <sighs> it's a different one. Anyway, uh, <laughs> what is that sensation? What is it when your body, when you feel pins and needles? I haven't felt that for a long time. Knock on wood. I don't even know if there's any wood around here. I'm just knocking on things that could be plastic. Um, well, I don't think the wall is plastic. That probably has wood in it. Maybe not. Anyway, I haven't felt that feeling in a long time of just like pins and needles. Um, <laughs> back to the topic. Everybody involved in my car, passing inspection, making it good to go. Thank you. Because that is a huge weight off my shoulders. Knowing that I can drive through <laughs> towns that are very heavily policed um, and not have to worry about getting a ticket is great. <laughs> I'd been subjecting myself to only um, areas that are very highly populated and street stops don't really happen. So uh, it's, it's quite good to not have to worry about that type of stuff anymore. <laughs> Um, so yes, shout out to everybody involved in my car passing inspection. <laughs> oh man, that, so that happened this week. That's a that's a really good thing for me. You know what I mean? Car pass inspection. That's very good. Another thing that happened is um, I have officially launched my second YouTube channel. <laughs> Round of applause, drum roll, please. All the good stuff. I need it all. Um. I've spoken, spoken, I've spoken on this, <laughs> I've spoken on the matter quite a few times, <laughs> but um, yeah, I've officially converted my old YouTube page into solely the Bobby Keith podcast. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, hello, this is uh, what used to be a page for just videos. No podcasting was even on my mind when I invented this page, created this page, curated this page. Filled it with content, <laughs> uh, amassed followers, <laughs> subscribers, it's YouTube. Um, but yeah, then at some point, it became the podcast page. So I figured instead of having just this weird page that has podcasts and YouTube videos and kind of directionless, I uh, decided to give it its own home. And create a new YouTube page just for traditional YouTube videos. That one is just titled Bobby Keith. You can go find it. Um, it is linked on my website, bobbykeith.com. If you click the YouTube tab, you will see both of these YouTube pages. Feel free to subscribe, show some love, or just check out what I got there. Um, as of right now, the only thing I have on the new page is the entirety of the Thailand series, which is my uh, my sort of magnum opus at this point of my YouTube career, um, until the Greece series comes out, of course, which is next on the docket. Uh, I just, I think understandably, never got around to fully editing it. <laughs> this past year has been kind of crazy. So keeping my, uh, just kind of keeping afloat um, with the, uh, with life, as opposed to focusing on the edit uh, was a priority for me to keep my mental sanity. So now that I feel as though I'm in a space where I can devote a bunch of time to editing videos, uh, I can get to the rest of the Grease series because it is partially edited. It just needs uh, a lot more editing. <laughs> but yeah, on the new YouTube page, expect travel, cooking, spirituality, and more. <laughs> I'm literally reading the header for my page. I've made a I'm doing it all. I'm doing it officially, you know what I mean? Um I retooled and worked all of my titles and thumbnails from the Thailand series to see if I can you know, finagle a few more views, a few more people to come over and check the videos out. You see that video? You want to click it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um so that's big news. That's exciting uh, to find because these are all things that I've just been 
slowly manifesting, slowly bringing to life. Um, and I've realized that that is the absolute best thing for me is to move at my own pace, not rush, not do anything I'm not comfortable with, not ready for. When I say I'm going to do something, I will do it, but it just has to be at my own pace. And that's one thing I've really learned about myself. And I'm really glad that I have because I just have millions of ideas, millions of uh, things I want to do and accomplish, see, travel, places I want to go. And I really just have to do it at my own pace. And that's that's something I've learned for myself. And it's really important for me. Um because I think I talked about retooling my business maybe, maybe a couple months ago as far as the strategy to fully switch one of my YouTube pages or fully switch my YouTube page to a podcast page, make a new YouTube page, move videos over. It's probably been a couple months, but um, I finally did it, launched. It's live, made it happen. And that is big news for me. It makes me very happy. The next big thing on the docket after the YouTube thing keeps rolling forward is obviously the clothing. Finally get to drop the clothing. That is uh, very next on the docket. Again, I move at my own pace. So if you're expecting, when I say coming soon, that really just means soon. <laughs> it seems like people are really liking the stuff I've created thus far. All the things I've shown on my Instagram and on uh, Roy G. Bibb's Instagram. Don't forget the third I, you know what I'm saying? R-O-Y-G-B-I-I-I-V. <laughs> um, so go check that out. Everybody's really liking the products thus far. Um, nothing is for sale yet, but everything is ready to be sold. It's really just about finding the moment where it just makes sense and right now it's just not making a million percent sense to do it but i'm sure it'll be fully ready for your purchase soon <laughs> oh man another really cool thing is this tiktok thing is i'm really enjoying it i don't know they, they've got me hooked my dopamine receptors are firing every time i open the app and get those get those little red notifications i'm aware i'm addicted but I am loving it. <laughs> it is certainly the quickest I've ever amassed the following. It's also the most content I think I've ever put out. I'm putting out two videos a day at minimum. Um, and it's working somehow. You know what I mean? I We're a couple months in. I've amassed like over six, close to 700 followers at this point. Um, over a hundred and... 20 something thousand likes like it's working so it's very exciting to actually have a content thing work um at a high level you know what i mean because uh, again i've had youtube pages i've uh i've done a lot of stuff instagrams um all of this but have i ever amassed things that grew this quickly things with thousands of views on the first no so shout out to tiktok uh, the platform itself um, and all of its intrusive policies <laughs> and intrusive uh, back end. Yes, it is the most intrusive. It, it has everything from every app you've ever touched, but it's good for creators. It allows us to grow. So shout out to TikTok. <laughs> I'm still pushing on that. Actually, if you're interested on that little YouTube uh, retooling of my thumbnails and titles I just spoke on, I fully detailed that on my TikTok, so um, all that hard work, days and days of hard work, you can check out over there on TikTok, and three little two-minute videos, you know what I mean? Six minutes compiled down from a lot of work. It's really cool, and um, it's also, I don't know, it's, it's obviously entertaining. It's the app of the moment. You know one thing I've been thinking about? Um with it being the playoffs, I'm watching a lot of like traditional television commercials because that's what you do when you watch a basketball game on like traditional television services. You the com you can't avoid the commercials. Um, you know, usually I'll do something on my phone or go get something, but sometimes you just have to sit there and watch the commercials. <laughs> my little tip for commercials, by the way, is uh, be conscious of them because if you're not conscious of them, they still will seep into your subconscious. 
which is, uh, you know, it could be very dangerous. You don't know the ideologies that are being promoted and um, pandered within these commercials. It's funny, a lot of these basketball commercials, you can clearly tell these very monolithic mega white corporations are like, do you guys know like three black people? Because we got an NBA commercial to do. And that's how they operate. <laughs> so be conscious of these things as these commercials are going. Because um, their intentions are obviously not pure. They're trying to sell you something. Um, but if it, if you're consciously looking at it and like, oh my God, these guys are disgusting. Like uh, this corporation's ideology is disgusting. Then you don't let that stuff really seep into your subconscious if you're aware of it happening. Anyway, more speaking on the the format of commercials themselves. Um, you know, after finally giving up my, uh, what's the joke? Giving up my, uh, my award for maturity and downloading TikTok and being fully on TikTok. Uh, I can't help but look at commercials like TikToks now. Yeah, I've been making content for a long time, but never short form. I, I, I've been upset with myself for making YouTube videos that were like four minutes long. I'm like, geez, that's all you got? I've been disappointed in myself for that. Of course, I'm my own toughest critic. I love my stuff, but um, if someone has to push you, push you forward, it might as well be yourself and not just let a random uh, little piece of zero and one from the internet tell you if you're good or bad. Um, might as well do it yourself. <laughs> Um, but anyway, I can't help but see commercials as TikToks because they're short form. There's a lot of editing usually, or it's just one long scene with a, with like a, a long camera shot, or it'll be a bunch of, a bunch of clips mashed together. And it's just like TikTok. You know what I mean? Um, I think that some of the more talented as far as videographers on TikTok, or any short form content like Instagram Reel or Facebook Reel, if that is a thing. I'm just guessing it is. I don't I don't know what's going on over there on Facebook. But some of the more creative, cinematographer-minded individuals should be getting real commercial jobs because it is truly an art to hold people's attention. And TikToks are a crash course in that the modern crash course it was youtube right you would notice over time at least me someone who's in the field of youtube how creators do these little tricks and these little things to get people's attention and hold it and that's what tiktok is right and that's what a commercial is at the end of the day they're gonna open with a joke maybe or something that pulls your heartstrings how about apple recently oh my goodness the apple watch commercials have y'all seen these? Have y'all seen these commercials? Yo, there are literally like, I may have talked about this on here before, honestly, but I, I know I've wanted to. I don't know if I remembered to talk about it. Apologies if I'm saying this again, but these new Apple commercials are insane for an Apple watch. Um, basically, they'll do this thing where they like, they, they show this epic shot of the woods deep in the woods, no trail, just emptiness and nature, no, no society near you. And then they get, then they show a person in there by himself or herself or themselves. Right. And it's like, man, wouldn't it suck to have a heart attack right here? <laughs> you wouldn't be able to get help. <laughs> and then they're like, unless you're wearing an Apple watch we'll call the police for you or the ambulance or whatever it is. We'll, we'll send you geo coordinates there. And another one's like a beautiful shot of the ocean and it's like stormy. And you're like, I don't know, you're like on a kayak or maybe you're swimming or diving or something. And, uh, all of a sudden you swallowed water. <laughs> you're going to drown. You would die if it wasn't for your Apple wash. <laughs> They're using some predatory guerrilla advertising. Some real, you fear death. 
advertising. It's insane. Our society as a whole has a a massive fear of death. A massive fear of death. It is uh, quite literally the only thing guaranteed in this life. So if you're fearing death, you're not really living. Let that one sink in, right? That's that's quite literally the only thing. When you are born, you're guaranteed one thing. That's death. You know, my mom was born. She died. I was born. I'm going to die. You were born. You're going to die. Now, what you do in between is that's up to you. Like I said earlier, I'm focused on trying to find the moment. I want to see the world. I want to be a father. These are things that I would like to do, but they're not guarantees. The guarantee is death. <laughs> I'm not really, I'm not trying to be morbid. This is just, this is, uh, this is what it is, right? Whatever you view this existence as is up to you. But one thing that's for certain is death of the human form. <laughs> Now we can take that wherever we want to after and that's why religion is such a major part of society and um, people sticking on to X religion, Y religion like flies on a piece of tape is so common and prevalent through our society. It's mainly a blanket, <laughs> a make you feel good about death thing. Um Certainly in the religion that I was uh, born into, right, with Catholicism, that's a big fear fear of death thing, a big accountability. You better be good or else you're going to go to hell and you don't want to go to hell. You don't want to die there. If you're going to die, you might as well go to heaven. Crazy manipulative, just like Apple, fear-based marketing for a religion. (laughs) Insane, absolute insanity. Um And that stuff works. That advertising works on people because, to be frank, a lot of us don't really think about this stuff. We're so lost in the happenings of today. Um, Johnny Depp and I got a, you know, I got a project for my manager that's due on Thursday. People don't really, people are believing that there's days of the week. (laughs) Isn't that wild? What? I'm not sure how to phrase this for this to really sink in, but people believe about days of the week. People believe in the construct of a week. People have fully adapted, allowed to sink in a control system for the sun. (laughs) Yeah, there's uh, seven, seven times the sun will come up and then... It's the same thing over again. No, that is not true. Today is not yesterday. Yesterday is not today. Tomorrow is not yesterday. And today is not tomorrow. The only thing we have is right now. The only time should be now. The only day should be now. The only feeling should be now. But we live in this system that does everything it can to detach us from that. To keep us in this system where we are beholden to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And there's holy days. Different religions have implemented a day of the week as a specific day. You know, we have Sunday, we have Saturday. I'm sure there's other days that other religions hold holy and high. But in reality, it is just the sun going up and the sun going down to put a day on it is just insanity, but we do. And we have, and it keeps us on this little, this little, uh, this little mouse trap, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. And I'm, again, I'm not trying to say I'm free from all of this. I release my podcast every Tuesday. I, I follow and adhere to the pattern of society to somewhat conform to something that would be, pleasurable or pleasing to the consumer um consistency you know that on tuesday morning i'm gonna be in your phone you know that on monday i'm probably recording something for you to listen to in your phone this structure can help but 
it keeps us away from the infinite moment, which is now. Shout out to D'Angelo Russell. Eliminated from the playoffs, but he's got that tattoo that says now. And I fuck with that. I fuck with that heavy. It's like a, a digital clock. And instead of it reading, you know, 333, it says N-O-W, now. You know what I'm saying? That's powerful. It's the most powerful thing we have is the moment. Uh, so, yeah, I think really talented TikTok videographers <laughs> should be directing these commercials. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Yo, one other thing about yoga, I opened with a very profound thing about child's pose and corpse pose. And in the middle, the only thing we're trying to do is grab the moment. Very profound, very true. But another thing is, the cool thing about yoga is you get to impersonate most of the animal kingdom. (laughs) You may start as a human. Quickly, you are infantized and you're a child. Now you're in child's pose. Oh, time to be a cow, cow's pose. Cat pose. (laughs) Oh, we're going to drop down. Um, Let's uh, let's lay and uh, let's do a baby cobra. (laughs) Now let's do a full cobra. All right. uh, How about up dog? What's up dog? (laughs) Now down dog. Now let's do a three-legged dog. You know what I'm saying? Um, Like Alana. (laughs) That was a very inside reference. I feel like I have to explain it. Um, There's a show called Broad City. Phenomenal show. Um, Probably a top five show of all time for me. Um, And one of the main characters, her name is Alana, and her and the other main character, Abby, there are two 20-somethings living in New York City, and that's the premise of the show, but it's a comedy. Um, (laughs) One episode, they discussed while sitting at a dog park, what type of dog would you want to be? (laughs) And uh, Alana said a a three-legged dog to get all the sympathy from all the other dogs to be a minority dog. (laughs) Oh, my God. And uh, obviously, Abby's a slim pug. Anyway, back. So three-legged dog. Now let's go to lizard. Why wouldn't we go right to lizard from there? And from there, why not pigeon? (laughs) From pigeon, we might as well do cow face. (laughs) From there, we might as well go back into an up dog, a down dog, a three-legged dog. Do it all again on the other side. And then we might as well do an eagle. How about a camel? (laughs) What about a mountain? Have you ever wanted to be a mountain? You could be a mountain in yoga. I swear, this whole podcast is just an infomercial for yoga and meditation. Do it. It'll change your life. Swear. Every day, do it. Worship your chakras. You know what I mean? Don't just, yeah, I got chakras. It might be a lot. No. Praise them. Allow them to be glorious and all glowing and ever present and ever vescent. That's what I do with myself every day. And I feel pretty good. <laughs> Ah, uh, so maybe it's time to transition into entertainment. I'm sorry, I don't really have a main topic for y'all this week. I didn't really have one. Um, as y'all will see with next week's episode, I've been pretty busy with something else. I uh, will reveal that with next week's episode, I suppose. But for now, let's get into the world of entertainment. This week, of course, that is going to include music, television, basketball. <laughs> Sorry, I got all aggressive there. Um, let's check a time real quick. Let's see where we're at. Where are we at? Where are we at? All right, we're about 40 minutes in. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, 39, for those of you who just looked at your phone and were like, is it 40 really? No, it's 39, but you get what I'm saying. I'm going to take a quick sip of water. Boom. So, best thing I heard all week. DMB, that's my bitch, ASAP Rocky, incredible song. I implore you to go listen. I implore you to go watch the music video. What more could you want? You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Rocky and Rihanna, it's an incredible video. It did appear at the end he was proposing. Unsure if that's reality or if that was just the music video, but 
I love that song. It's on repeat. I've been listening to a fair amount of new music lately. Um, you know, I did the thing. I did the thing this week where, for those of you who don't know, I am a uh, avid anti-streamer. I am a let me buy your album on iTunes <laughs> or let me download it through other means, but let me not subscribe to a streaming service. I need the hard copy of the files. I just have a little bit of a mistrust towards one service holding all of my uh, my music. Isn't isn't that strange? Like when the, this is a very paranoid frame of mind, but the music could be turned off and you might not have any of the files and then you don't have any music to listen to. <laughs> so I like having the files for a rainy day, if you get what I'm saying. Uh, but I had a, a six month free trial for Apple Music because, you know, sometimes these companies cave and they're like, let's give them a free trial and bank on them not canceling it. Well, Anytime I get a free trial, I put the reminder in my phone to cancel it a day before it charges me, and that's how it goes. But anyway, I'm doing that with Apple Music right now. It's probably my third or fourth free trial <laughs> through Apple Music. <laughs> and for the first time, I hit the thing where it's like Bobby's Station. Basically, these streaming services compile the data of what you listen to, what you like to listen to, and then create a sort of tailor-made playlist for you. And it's really good, honestly. Um, scary good. I remember the other day I got in my car and I had uh, OPM playing on my CD, like in my CD player for my car. It's a weird way to say it, but I have like physical CDs. And the one that was in my car when I turned it on was from West Side with Love 2, of course, <laughs> by Dom Kennedy, right? So I, I had that OPM on. You know, got a pocket full of ones. We spend it all PM other people's money. You know what I'm saying? I had that OPM busting. And I put on uh the Apple, you know, I plugged in my phone to play music. Uh and what do you know? <laughs> OPM is on the station, so it is scary accurate. Um, probably very invasive, although it had no way of connecting to my car to know that I'm listening to that as apart from, um, listening and spying on, uh, things I listen to, um, because my phone doesn't, con I don't have like a smart car, <laughs> like I plug in an aux cord and it doesn't connect to my, uh, interface at all. Yeah. If that makes sense. I have an older car. Um, Anyway, I really like the randomized station thing. It's good. It plays music I like. Um, and I suggest it. You know what I mean? I'm skipping a few songs here and there, but there's stuff I'm like, oh, wow, this is great. Like, Lil Baby's getting new. Like, I, I'm not out here checking for Lil Baby. But if a really good Lil Baby song comes on in my, excuse me, in my little shuffle thing, well, now I like that song. <laughs> And Lil Baby's got some great songs. So I'm not gonna hold you. Um, but anyway, I've been doing that. Uh I listened to some of that Jack Harlow album. Jack Harlow. <laughs> uh the Drake song is really good. I did the thing. I did the anti-music lover thing where I literally went to the the Jack Harlow album. I clicked the song that had Drake featured, listened to it, I liked it, clicked the song that had Pharrell featured, listened to it, liked it. And the nail tech song. I listened to it. Obviously liked it. And that was about it. Um, you know, he's a superstar, right? Like, we can't deny Jack is a great artist, but it still doesn't really click for me. I don't know what it is. But the Drake song, the Drake verses. I mean, did you listen to that? He was talking about having to have therapy for abandonment issues because his pops leaving. <laughs> If y'all know me, it's pretty on the money, right? You know what I'm saying? So um, I really like that Drake verse. I really like that Drake verse. So shout out to the Drake and Jack Harlow doing their thing out there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> In the world of music, uh, obviously, next week, we have Kendrick Lamar dropping. The most 
anticipatory thing I've ever been anticipating for a long time. Oh, I failed to mention uh, the new Ab Soul song, Holland Days. Very good song. Very good record. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've been playing it a lot. Probably that and That's My Bitch. Uh, well, they came out week uh, like a week apart, but those two Lucy's little singles I've been playing more than anything. So shout out to those two wonderful artists. And right now, at this exact moment, I think my project of the year, album of the year, is that D-Day joint, that Gangsta Grills, J. Cole. I don't know what it is about the, you know, the Gangsta Grills DJ drama little tapes, you know, last year with Tyler. That was my favorite album from last year. This year, so far, the little D-Day mixtape is my favorite thing. The year before that, 2020, Smino might have had my favorite project with that She Already Decided, you know what I'm saying, mixtape bringing the mixtape back into the front of the culture you know what i'm saying that's i think what smino did in 2020 right at the beginning of the pandemic you know it's like let me put out a little mixtape classic style you know he's rapping over uh savage by uh mega stallion you know what i'm saying like you named it cabbage <laughs> yeah isley brother features stuff you can't clear and i think that was the impetus for this new wave of mixtapes being the hottest thing on earth because a lot of these kids don't even know what that piff is. A lot of these kids don't even know that that's what the get on used to be. The get on used to be you would go on everybody's hit record, do your own version. People would like your bars and then you could put out your own album. That's what it used to be. That somehow faded from the culture. I think with streaming kind of went hand in hand, right? Because it's like, well, I mean, what's the point of a mixtape anymore if it, we're going to count it all the same? I might as well make money from it and not, you know, people got more intelligent about uh about that. So I don't know. All I'm trying to say is this D-Day project from Dreamville, Gangsta Girls, DJ Drama's got a little formula going right now. This one and uh, the Tyler album, I mean, it don't get much better than those two. <laughs> it really don't. Um, I feel like I saw a Tyler interview. Re- oh, Narwhal. Narward and Tyler had a crazy interview. Um, go check that out. You know what I'm saying? We've talked about Narward on here before. Legendary, legendary interviewer. Uh, Tyler and him did a great one just this week. It came out. It's incredible. Go check it out. <laughs> so I think that's about it on music. I would say in the TV realm, um, Tal and I started watching The Circle, which is another fascinating reality tv show this one is like very multi-layer fascinating if you're unaware it's a netflix show basically you put a handful of people inside of the same house and everybody kind of creates and operates a social media type profile so like for example i would go in i would sit down on the couch and i would pick two pictures and i'll write a little bio about myself uh, creator profession and I like to play basketball I love my wife all this all that now the kicker is you could choose to be a catfish if you want so there's people out here uh you know playing their parents you know what I'm saying there's people out there playing a random a random person and basically it's a popularity contest it's like social media that's kind of what the the game is designed off of uh Basically, every week they vote who's the most popular. The popular people become influencers and then they vote someone out. And basically, you're trying to vote out the catfish, etc. Or the people bringing bad vibes. But it's just a fascinating show. You know what I'm saying? A reality time killer. Study the humans and what they do and different characters and archetypes of people. It's fascinating stuff. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) So check that out if you want. You don't have to. But obviously, the main event. There's no other reason for me to be talking about anything except for the NBA right now. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, we are in the second round. We're deep into it at this point. The series are evolving and changing by the moment. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Dallas, Dallas tied up the series at two two. We now have a three game series. Against the Phoenix Suns. Shout out to my Mavericks fans. For real, for real. Theo, Eric, I hope y'all beat the Suns. That would be incredible. (laughs) We've had a lot happen in this past week. So, uh, 
let's run through it. You know what I'm saying? Last time we spoke, last time we spoke, um, the Bucks won the first game against the Celtics, and the Warriors won the first games against the Grizzlies. So since then, we've had a lot of stuff happen. Miami and Phoenix took 1-0 leads on their respective series, with Miami being Philly without Joel Embiid, might I, might I add, you know what I'm saying? And Phoenix beating uh, Dallas. The next night, we have Boston with a thumping. You know what I'm saying? A thumping on the Bucks. That was a that was a crazy game. Jalen went superhuman. Some of the stuff he was doing just didn't even make sense. Like <laughs> it really didn't. It really didn't. Um, I think he had thirty. What did he have? Let me pull it up. He had thirty something. He went absolutely ballistic. Uh, yeah, he had thirty six and six. But in the first half, I think he had twenty seven. So I mean, that first half from Jalen was crazy. Um, Bucks didn't have much of an answer. Definitely missing Middleton in that game for sure. Uh, they needed some scoring. I mean, Giannis put up damn near triple double twenty eight nine seven. But it's only so much you can do. And Drew still crazy nineteen four seven incredible. But again, there's only so much you can do. But the true story of that night came with game two. Now is where Memphis. Beat the Warriors 106 to 101 without to mention, uh, or without even mentioning Draymond Green getting ejected. <laughs> that was this game, right? Why can't I pull up the box score? Well, it doesn't really matter if it was this game or the other game or blah, blah, blah. But uh, what is true is Draymond got ejected. <laughs> Um, I think that was in the first game, actually. I think we saw it. We talked about that last week. Game two, it's an even crazier story. Dylan Brooks gets ejected for an insane foul on uh, my man Gary Payton, uh, who ended up breaking his shit. You know what I mean? Um, His elbow, it went bad. Uh, let's see. Why is it not telling me what days these were? Um, Yeah, so... I don't know if y'all saw it, but Dylan Brooks basically fouled Peyton. A hard foul that came across the face, but Peyton landed really crazy, like right on his elbow. Um, He had to leave the game. Uh, He's out for the series now. Brooks got ejected and suspended for the next game, um, which happened yesterday, Saturday, uh, game three. but still, Memphis somehow won that game. I think Jaw had 47. I'm trying to pull up the stats. It's just not letting me. So uh, we're just going to take my word that that was the game Jaw had 47. Because <laughs> it was. Um, but you know what I mean? That Memphis team is so good. But obviously that Warriors team is too. It's a really good se- It's my favorite series, obviously. Um it's the most entertaining thing you could possibly watch right now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you just can't go wrong. So shout out to them. Then uh, the following night, we had, uh, you know, Miami go up 2 nothing. Excuse me. Um, Miami go up 2 nothing. Another easy win against the Joelis Sixers. And Phoenix with a big easy win over, excuse me, over Dallas. No games on Thursday night. That Friday night, we had... Joel returned. Joel returned. They kind of beat up Miami. And uh, Dallas did the same against Phoenix. Excuse me. I just uh, caught the little hiccups or something. Saturday, we had a crazy, 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 crazy Milwaukee-Boston game. I mean, Milwaukee was supposed to win that. They had it in the hand the whole time. But the Celtics made it really interesting. Milwaukee kind of collapsed in the last few minutes. The Celtics, they 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 should have had it sealed with like four minutes to go, but they let the Celtics back in, and it really came down to the last moment. There was a uh, a last second missed buzzer beater. Whew. Milwaukee won behind an insane Giannis game. I mean, what do you have? 42, 12, and eight. <laughs> Brooke was awesome in that game. It looked like nobody could stop Brooke in the post. Uh, but he was in foul trouble, so he didn't really get a lot of chance to shine. Um, that series is 2-1 right now. Milwaukee got the lead. 
And then after that, we had a uh, Golden State absolutely destroy Memphis, not without a uh, you know Jaw putting up thirty four and seven. Uh, I saw the averages that Jaw's putting up for this series. Let me see a uh, view series. NBA's got a cool thing here um, where you can see this. So for the series, Jaw has thirty eight and eight. He's averaging thirty eight points and eight assists for this series. He's doing everything he possibly can, but hey, the Warriors are just clicking on all cylinders. They're shooting 50% from the field for the series, while Memphis is shooting 42%. Um, that seems to be the major difference in these games is Golden State's just shooting the ball better. You know what I mean? It's tough to compete against the Splash Brothers when they're shooting like that. <laughs> so uh, even though Jaws putting up 40 and 40 and 40, not much you could do with that. <laughs> That brings us to Sunday, which had, uh, you know, Dallas tie up the series 2-2. Really excited for that. And uh, Philly-Miami is actually currently taking place as I'm recording. Again, uh, I'm weirdly recording on a Sunday night. Y'all will know why next week. But um, I don't know the answer for that one. I'm going to watch the second half right after this. Currently, it's 44-41 Miami. Um, Let's see what's happened so far. Joel's got 15. Bam's got 12. Battle of the centers, you know what I'm saying? So I'm excited to see the rest of that game. Let me think about these series right now. In the East, Milwaukee, Boston. Boston has to win one. I don't know if they will tomorrow night or tonight. or When you're listening to this, it would have already happened regardless. But if Boston doesn't win that, it's going to be scary. It'll be... a a little gentleman sweep for Milwaukee, which I don't think any of us expected. Um, but they're just so dominant. Giannis is the best player on the court. He'll be the best player on the court in every series all the way to the finals, I think. Let me think. I think he'll be the best player regardless. I think he's the best player left. I mean, KD is the only guy with an argument. LeBron's the only guy with an argument. Steph can argue, but he doesn't have the defense like Giannis. Um, Embiid can argue, but Giannis is just a little more complete. So, I mean, yeah, Giannis would be the best player left in the playoffs, I think, right? Shit. So, I like Milwaukee versus Boston, but I hope it goes seven. I wouldn't be mad if Boston won, especially living in the area. It'd be cool to see a little playoff pride because I just... You know, living up here, people don't really care about the Celtics. People care about, like, the Patriots and the Red Sox and the Bruins. Um, Obviously, people care about the Celtics. But, like, when you're out at, like, Whole Foods, it's, like, Patriot sweaters. Nobody's, like, rocking Celtics gear. (laughs) Nobody cares. You know what I mean? It's weird. It's absolutely weird. So it'd be nice to see them advance farther so more people would be, like, talking basketball. Because people don't really talk basketball. You know what I mean? They talk, like, football and I don't know that language. I know basketball. I'm fluent. So I'd love to talk more about that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I like Miami. Or, excuse me, I like Milwaukee. Um, geez, the Miami-Philly series kind of really rides on the game that's happening as I'm speaking. Ah, man. The way Philly won, the way Philly won when Joel came back, it was nice to see. But I think Miami will solve that puzzle. I don't trust either of those teams versus either of the uh, other matchup. I think Milwaukee or Boston will advance to the finals. I think it'll be Milwaukee, though. I'm not going to go against the defending champs until they prove me otherwise. So give me Milwaukee in the East at this current moment. The next episode you hear from me, I think the conference finals will be playing. So give me Milwaukee versus... uh, Shit, I want to say Philly, but I think it's going to be Miami. So give me Milwaukee, Miami, although I would prefer Philly. You know what? Let's give Joel a win, man. Nobody's listening right now. (laughs) So let's uh, let's go Milwaukee, Philly. You know what I'm saying? Let's see Joel and Giannis go at it for a whole conference final. And let's see uh, Drew humiliate that guy Harden over there. Sorry. (laughs) So give me Milwaukee in the east and then in the west. This is where it gets tricky. This is where it gets super tricky because i could see any of these teams 
Except Dallas. I'm sorry, Theo. I'm sorry, Eric. I could see any of these teams getting to the finals. I guess I could I could see Dallas do it after today's performance. That was a spectacle. Let me take it back. I could see any of the four teams in the West do it. But let's be realistic. Phoenix, Dallas. Three games left. Two in Phoenix, one in Dallas. You got to win two of them. This so far is the closest of all of them. I mean, it's the only one that's 2-2 at the time of recording. Dallas has all the momentum right now. But, man, I think I have to go with Phoenix. I really do. It's been the best team all year. I see no reason why they wouldn't, you know, finish it out. Hopefully, it'll be in seven games now. I would love to see Luka, you know what I'm saying, go into Phoenix, get a W. Because nobody can guard him. I mean, Mikel's trying, but... It's Luca, you know what I'm saying? Luca's better than Mikel. I'm sorry. <laughs> so give me Phoenix and the other series is really where it's at. I mean, uh, so GP's out. GP's out now the whole series. Dylan's coming back next game. So give me give me Memphis winning their uh their second home game. So it'll be two two. And then we'll have Memphis Golden State in three. We got the championship DNA in Golden State, and then we have the greatest team, <laughs> the greatest bonding, the greatest cohesiveness DNA in Memphis. Like how I couldn't go against Milwaukee. Defending chance, I don't think I can go against Golden State as a defending supernova of a champion. So I think I have to give it to Golden State. I would love to see Memphis win it, though. I think they're... They're playing so together, it's not even, it doesn't even make sense, you know what I mean? And I think maybe this is their last kind of, their last test. Next year, maybe they go right to the finals. They could do it this year, but they would be the youngest team in NBA history to ever make the finals. So I I don't know, I, I think experience might play its card, and I think Golden State is going to win that. So Golden State, Phoenix, that could go any way, I mean... <laughs> Phoenix at full strength. I don't think they have any injury right now. Book looks good. You know what I'm saying? Do we get a finals rematch or do we get the Warriors to play the Bucks? Ah, oh, man. I would love to see a finals rematch. It's kind of been destined all year. But if there was any other team you'd want to see in the finals, it's the Warriors. That's what they live for. Without GP, that provides less guarding for uh, CP and Book. I mean, they are guards, and it's Steph and Clay and Jordan Poole, Andrew Wiggins. I don't know. I think Phoenix might have the advantage there. So Phoenix, Milwaukee, give me Milwaukee. Let's go. <laughs> if Middleton comes back, obviously. If he doesn't, then give me Phoenix. Give me give me anybody. <laughs> uh, I think that's going to do it for this week, y'all. I got a big week coming up. I can't wait to share everything with y'all. Again, uh, sorry this one was a little disjointed, a little sad, not a lot of focus. but. It is what it is. I love y'all. Sending y'all peace, love, and positivity. This has been episode 87 of the Bobby Keith Podcast. Humans, aliens, other. Thank you for tuning in. Peace.